Hello, welcome to Pathagonia. This is Jay. Today we're going to use Kurt's notes to talk about effusion cytology. Before we begin, if you haven't already checked Kurt's notes website, it is great. It literally tells you pathology from head to toe. And he recently has a new note on melanocytic tumors of the skin. I'm on my first day of cytopathology rotation of my third year. And cytopathology is hard but it's so cool. And let's learn together. Let's talk about when we get effusions, where can they come from? They can come from the peritoneum, they can come from the pleura and pericardium, the three P's. And these are all mesothelium lined cavities. What are normal elements you would see in an infusion specimen? You guessed it, mesothelium, but also mixed inflammatory cells and histiocytes. Let's talk about mesos first. They have round central nucleus with coarse chromatin and abundant dense cytoplasm. They have this lacy, frilly skirt appearance. And that's due because of surface microvilli that we can't see except on electron microscopy. And that's why there's a little bit of separation that's known what we call as the windows. Carcinomas, on the other hand, generally do not have windows. Uh, depending on how the effusion specimen is, or how the specimen is taken, whether it's through an effusion or it's through a wash, it'll explain if mesos come in single cells or pairs or as sheets. So washes, one of my senior residents who's now on staff had this amazing analogy of like surgeons being like using a wash and it's a power washer. And they're using the power washer to kind of clean the or get samples of the mesothelium lined surface. And because of the power washer, it kind of strips the mesothelium lined cavity into sheets. And that's why you get these sheets. And they're monolayer, they're well organized, honeycombed, and little nuclear overlap. Whereas in fusions, there's no power wash. So these are often dispersed as single cells or sometimes in pairs. Mesothelial cells can sometimes take phagocytic roles, and so it can exist on a spectrum with histiocytes. One of the scariest things for me are reactive mesos, especially really reactive mesos. They can be really scary and appear like carcinoma or mesothelioma. And some cytologic features include prominent nucleoli, as you can see here, larger nuclear size and multinucleation, mitotic figures, vacuolizations, cytoplasmic bag, blebs, and hugging. But uh, a clue that they're reactive is smooth nuclear contours. The most, the winner for the most reactive mesothelial group are pericardial, mesothelium of the pericardium. Because as you can think about it, the heart as it beats, it hits and rubs against the pericardial sac. Stains to identify mesothelial cells are a lot. Our institution generally uses calretin and CK56 as a first resort. Um, but in addition to those include D240, CK AE1, AE3, CK7, WT1, and mesothelin. Histiocytes are peripherally located grooved, curved nuclei or cells with curved nuclei. They're smaller than the mesothelial cell nucleus and have abundant foamy cytoplasm and can contain debris. Monocytes are pre-activated or they're not activated yet to become macrophages. So you can see them, you can think of them as a precursor to macrophages or histiocytes. And to identify them, you could order a CD68 and CD163. Lymphocytes are small cells with a single round nucleus and a thin rim of cytoplasm. Uh, they're about the size of a red blood cell and a few is normal, but when you see a lot, you want to have a particular differential, including lymphoma. And if you're suspecting that as a staff, you want to send for flow, maybe send three to five passes to flow, um, tuberculous effusion, chylus effusion, and metastasis. Uh, collagen balls. These are spheres of collagen surrounded by a single layer of mesothelial cells. Uh, they're seen in pelvic washings 
and likely from the ovary. You won't see them in a pleural specimen or a pericardial specimen, and they're completely benign. Um, I like these because it reminds me of when I was a first year and my seniors would, during interesting case conference, kind of point this incidental finding and I'd be like, oh wow, is that, wow, that's, that's really weird. And lo and behold, in hindsight, these are collagen balls. Okay, let's talk about malignant effusions. Malignant adenocarcinoma. So when you get an effusion specimen, you wanna look for if there's a second population of foreign slash epithelioid cells. If you see from a low power, some second population, as you zoom in, you wanna look if there's, there should be, if it is a carcinoma, cytologic atypia, uh, mucin production, larger size than a medium sized mesos, uh, they have a smooth kind of contour, delicate cytoplasm, and one of my staff likes to say the nuclei kind of pooch out of the cytoplasm, as you can see here. And they're very cohesive as opposed to lymphocytes slash lymphomas generally. Um, so they're, they can present as 3D balls, papillae. And if you hear on a, for instance, a pleural effusion, there are cannonballs, quote unquote, that's your buzzword for breast carcinoma. And just in general for carcinomas, they have these kind of smooth smooth community borders. If it's knobby, it favors mesos. And on the cell block, it often has a halo around tumor clusters. You, you don't see it here, but you could imagine like in the background, amongst the background histiocytes and inflammatory cells, you'll have this like thin white space. And that's retraction artifact and that's a, a soft clue that this can be carcinoma. Remember, some carcinomas are not cohesive, including lobular carcinoma, as you can see here, with, and it has an intracytoplasmic lumen, as well as a poorly cohesive or your gastric signet ring carcinoma. Here's another picture of carcinoma where it's, you can see the background red blood cell and maybe six through eight, six to eight can fit inside one of this monster or this very large carcinoma cell. So if you get an effusion specimen and you're suspecting there's a second population, but you're not sure, uh, my institution has the quote unquote big four, Burr at four, Mach 31. And if these are positive, it suggests that these are metastatic adenocarcinoma versus cal if cal and then we would order calred and ck56 and if those were positive that would suggest mesothelial cells um, so there are other stains including b72.3 cloud and four for those are positive metastatic positive it suggests metastatic adenocarcinoma as well as wt1 and uh, d240 okay lymphoma can happen in effusion specimens it's dominated by lymphocytes Lymphocytes generally have a co discohesive, they're very discohesive um, as opposed to carcinoma. And if it is high grade, there can be lots of big cells, mites, and karyorectic debris. And you wanna consider sending flow or staining the cell block. Um, we've, it's confusing sometimes, lymphomas. We've had a case during interesting case conference where the lymphoma appears polymorphous as opposed to monoclonal but only on flow did we find out that it was entirely or mostly monoclonal. Um, a differential or a thought you want to have within the lymphoma pathologies is primary effusion lymphomas. Uh, these often occur in immunocompromised patients. It's aggressive and it involves only the pleura, peritoneal fluid, or pericardium, and there's no solid component. These are very high grade and are positive for HHV8 EVV, CD30, and MYC overexpressed. Okay, let's talk about malignant mesothelioma. This is often due to older men who've had a history decades ago of asbestos exposure. It's poor prognosis and has this rind-like encasement of the lung. Um, here's an example not of not only the rind of the lung, but also the pericardium. And in this case, you won't have a second population because it'll all be mesothelial in origin. And some clues you wanna look for, even though it's hard to diagnose just on cytology, are 
more and bigger cells and more and bigger clusters. They'll have this knobby kind of flower-like contours. I like to think of it as like a ball of frozen blueberries like this. You know, mesotheliomas will generally cluster in more than 10 uh, cells and they'll have this knobbiness. And because it has medical legal implications, if you're not 100% sure, it can be signed out as atypical mesothelial proliferation. And some studies that can help us diagnose mesothelioma include on IHC, uh, BAP1 or MTAP loss, and on FISH, P16 deletion. And mesothelioma on tissue biopsy, here's an example. Uh, I used, got this picture from Web of Pathology. It's a great visual reference for uh, pathologists. And you can see these papillar form, papilloriform uh, structures. There's no obvious desmoplastic response. Um, there's minimal inflammatory infiltrate. And there's dense cellularity. Stromal invasion is usually apparent. Uh, maybe this case is not, maybe on lower power, we can see more stromal invasion. Uh, they have complex papillae, tubules, and cellular stratifications. The cells are surrounded by stroma. Uh, there will be expansile nodules with disorganized growth and minimal inflammation, as we saw. Um, let's talk about benign effusions. Um, there, it, there are rheumatoid, eosinophilic, and lupus effusions, as well as other ones, which we'll talk about later. Um, rheumatoid effusions, this can be on exams. Uh, they might show you kind of necrotic debris here, as well as multinucleated giant cells and granulomas and that's your your differential should immediately be rheumatoid effusion and that the person especially if the person has a history of rheumatoid arthritis um you can see bizarre but benign cells so just be careful and this kind of reminds me of a tadpole cell really um but it, it's not very orangophilic eosinophilic effusions. You'll have abundant EOs, rarely malignant, but just as if you see a lot of lymph lymphocytes in infusion, if you see a lot of EOs, you should have a particular differentials, including pneumothorax, prior procedure, hypersensitivity reaction, and infection. And then lupus effusion. This also, if they, show, they can show you a single image on maybe an exam, and you'll have to guess what kind of effusion it is. And usually it's a lupus effusion if you see this. Um, these are classically LE cells, which are basically neutrophils that have phagocytosed dying nuclei or dying cells. Or I'm sorry, dying cells. Um, you'll have autoantibodies like anti-DNA attack a cell. The cell dies and the nucleus is shed, creating an LE body that is phagocytosed by a neutrophil. It's not too sensitive or specific, but it is classic and can prompt further testing if you do see it. Chylus effusion. Oh, this takes me back to my surgery rotation. Um, this is this can happen when you have a leakage of your thoracic duct, um, which carries fatty lymphatic fluids, and it's often caused by lymphoma. So if you see this, you want to have lymphoma as your differential. Um, it's rich in triglycerides, and it will appear milky white on like this the gross sample itself, and it has mostly lymphocytes with some lipophages and mesos. Tuberculous effusion will have abundant lymphocytes, T cells with sparse mesos. Histiocytes are present, but giant cells are rare. Endosalpingiosis. You'll have fallopian tube type epithelium present. Um, it'll be columnar to cuboidal cells with bland nuclear features. There'll be cilia, which will be your Q. That can be very helpful. Um, they can have somoma bodies and it is PAX8 positive, like many other gyn tumors that can appear in the fusion, so be careful. And last but not least, endometriosis. Uh, it can be hard to diagnose without history, but you want to think about this in, your, in the back of your head. Uh, your tri triad for diagnosis are hemosiderin-laden macrophages, as you can see here, endometrial glands. Uh, they are small columnar cells that are, are similar to mesos and endometrial stroma, like histiocytes or lymphs. Uh, cell blocks can be very helpful, as you can see here, and you can see the endometrial glands, the endometrial stroma. And something just to note is, if you have a pelvic washing, 
and you do your big four, your Mach 31 Burrep 4 for epithelial cells versus calretinin and CK56 for mesothelial cells. And if the cell morphology is not very alarming, it's pretty bland and kind of looks like endometrium, you it's important to know that those cells will be CK or will be Mach 31 Burrep 4 positive because they're epithelial cells. Okay, so just to recap, we talked about effusion cytology. Think about your locations, your three Ps, peritoneum, pleura, pericardium. What will you see in just a benign effusion specimen? Mesos, they'll have windows, just like eyes are windows to your souls. Mesos are windows to your uh, peritoneum, pleura, or pericardial specimens. Um, reactive mesos are very scary, but a clue is smooth nuclear contours. You can have histiocytes. They're small. The nuclei are smaller than the nuclei of a mesothelial cell. You can have lymphocytes as well as other mixed background inflammatory cells. Uh, collagen balls you will see on pelvic washes. There are they are incidental. And then malignant infusions. You want to look if it's carcinoma uh, for a second foreign epithe uh, epithelioid population that'll have cytologic atypia. That'll have smooth community borders. A 3D kind of spiral or papilla shape. Um, they'll have nuclei pooching out. They can have mucin production. Um, they can have this retraction artifact on the cell block. And they're very large. Think about your big four to dis differentiate, including Burrep 4, Mach 31, and Calred and CK56, as well as these other stains. When you see a lot of lymphocytes, Think about lymphoma, think about sending for flow. Your lymphocytes are generally discohesive. When you see a lot of mesos that have macronuclei, no smooth nuclear borders, that are multinucleated, have macronucleoli um, that have are clusters of 10 or more cells that have this morular or knobby border, think mesothelioma. If you're not sure, and it's hard to diagnose on cytology alone, think about your um, kind of phrase, atypical mesothelial proliferation. Um, to better cinch your diagnosis of mesothelioma, think about BAP IHC, where you'll have BAP1 loss, and FISH, you'll have a P16 deletion. And benign effusions with uh, instant pattern recognition, almost in IPRs, are when you have necrotic debris and uh, multinucleated giant cells with a, of a, from a patient with rheumatoid arthritis, you want to talk about rheumatoid effusions. Um, eosinophilic effusions, just like um, lymphocytic infusions, you will have a particular differential, including pneumothorax, prior procedure, hypersensitivity reaction, and infection. Lupus effusion, you will classically, <coughs> especially on exams, you can see uh, LE cells, which are neutrophils that have phagocytose, um, a dead cell and its nucleus. Chylus effusions happen due to leakage of thoracic duct, and this can be caused by lymphoma. You can have endosalpingiosis, where it'll have bland nuclear features with cilia and endometriosis. All right, well, thank you for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up or subscribe. And if you are on Cytopath 2, or if you really like Cytopath, let me know. All right, bye.